Okay, I thought we'd get into a little bit of restore before we started doing some more backup stuff. Uh, just do a little bit of basic restore here. Um, the the funny thing is, is I, I want to show a basic restore, but I don't really have a basic restore to do, so we're going to get a little bit more involved in this video anyway, but I'll, I'll go over the, the basic restore. So the basic restore is the same as the backup. Restore database i2 bookworm from disk equals, and you don't mind if I just cut and paste this, right there. Okay, that's the exact same thing as the backup syntax. In fact, I'll go ahead and just comment that out so you don't, there's the comment, there it is. Okay, so we've got a basic restore line here. You want to restore the database as opposed to restoring the log. and you want to name it IT Bookworm, and you want to take it from the disk this time instead of to the disk. And again, if you had a tape or if you had a, uh, um, if you had a, a backup device, and maybe I'll cover backup devices in, in one of the next backup videos, then you would just put the name of the backup device and the name of the tape there. Now the thing is, is this was uh, IT Bookworm when I backed it up, but I don't have to restore it as that. I can restore it as anything I want to. I can say, IT Bookworm Restore, or, you know, again, Sean's favorite DB, right? I mean, I can do anything I want there, but we'll say IT Bookworm Restore. Now, the reason why I can't do an ordinary restore on this is because I've already got IT Bookworm there, and the files already exist in the locations that they're in. So I could do a couple things. Um, one of them is I could I could force a replace over the other one, which I really don't want to do because it's my production database there, and and or a copy of my production database, and it's kind of it's kind of my official copy, so I really don't want to mess with it. But what I could do here is I could uh, I could move the files somewhere else and restore it as uh, I2 Bookworm Restore. The problem is is I don't know where the files are. So in order to find the files are because the what SQL is going to do is SQL is going to look to put the files where they originally were. So you either need to put them where they originally were, or you need to move them somewhere else, and that means that you need to tell SQL where to move them when you run the restore. So what you need to do to do that is you need to do a, a restore file list only. And again, I'll go ahead and just copy paste this because you want to you want to read that same backup file that you're trying to get the file names out of. A little bit of F5 there. Okay, so the file list only gives you the logical file name and it tells you where SQL expects to find these files on disk. And a lot of times you'll back, you'll, you'll back up a database and go to restore it to say a test system, a dev system, or uh, just some other system if you wanna if you wanna look at the database for for whatever reason, or if you if you need to move it to a different production database and it just doesn't have the same disk structure. So if if this database if this server didn't have the same disk structure as the one I took it from, or as it did when I took the backup, then I'm clearly gonna need to move these files. If I don't move these files, it's gonna it's it's gonna blow up on me. And as a matter of fact, if I were to run this right now without moving the files or without um, without doing a force restore it's going to give me the the file can't be overwritten and it'll actually give you a little bit of uh, should give you a little bit of advice in here uh, yeah it can't be overwritten use with move is what it says right here to to identify a valid location for the file so we'll get into how to actually do that in a minute if you want to overlay a database or maybe in another video but for right now we're gonna move the files because we want to have a different copy of this database on that server so I'll go ahead and get my restore list back or my file list and I'm gonna say with move and I wanna move the logical file name so I'll just cut and paste this I wanna move the logical file name to 
oh, let's see, where do I want to move it to? Let's say uh, d colon backslash dot back, and comma, and move the log. this one too because I'll just cut this stuff out this time bookworm restore log now you don't have to move both the files you can move just one of them but these move options if you had 30 files in this database then you could move all 30 of them like this it's a little laborious and I would probably write code to do that and I actually have but uh, for our purposes we've only got two files so we're, we can do this by hand so again, you've got restore database. You can name it whatever you want. It can be the original name or something completely made up. From disk and the disk location, the physical disk location where the file resides. And then you'll say with. With has all kinds of options. With replace, with move, uh, with stats. So you can see the stats as it restores. If you've got a big database that's going to take a couple hours to restore, you may want to get some some stats every every few minutes to let you know that it's still plugging along so this is the logical file name right here that's basically just a friendly name inside SQL that it uses to keep the the file straight and this is where that logical file name resides so you tell it move this file name to this location and tell it to move this file name to this location because it's going to be looking for each one of those in those places So you come here, and anything you highlight is going to be run. I don't know how much you know about SQL. And we should be restoring over the wire right now. Okay, good. And we restored over the wire. And we'll see that when we refresh the database list, and we see IT Bookworm restore. Good. Now... I was talking a minute ago about being able to overlay a database in order to in order to uh, force a restore of a database that already exists, and that that comes in handy quite often when you you know when you've got database corruption um, or uh, something else, uh, you know, either database corruption, uh, data corruption, or maybe just you know you've you know, accidentally deleted something that you shouldn't have, which is actually data corruption. And it's just easier for you to go back to the previous backup of the database and maybe roll through some of the logs. Um, for that, the easiest thing to do, you've still got your move options here. So I'll put a comma and with replace. And that's really all you need. You just start tacking uh, options onto this move. So you don't have to put with anything else, just with replace. If you didn't have these move statements, then you could just say with replace. I could just say this right here, and that's a perfectly valid that's a perfectly valid backup statement because IT Bookworm Restore already exists. It's already going to put those those files where where they need to go. And it's just going to replace the database that's there. See? And it's already done. So, or I could have moved them at the same time. Uh, it's all good stuff. So, uh, another method for doing that is kind of the brute force method, right? I just come here and delete the database. Tell it OK and it's deleted. I'm going to get rid of this replace real quick. I want to bring that database back real quick. Okay, I restored it again. And just to show you another way to delete it, and there you go. 
like that, like that, and the database is dropped, and it actually drops a lot quicker than it does through the GUI. So there's a little bit about uh, about restoring and using a, a file list only. File list only is is pretty handy at times because it's the only way you have if you've if you're just given a backup file and you have no idea whether the backup will even go or not, um, whether the the server's got the right structure, whether the files exist, I mean whether the folder folders exist or anything, you need to run a file list only over here. And I'll do that again for you one more time, just so you can see. Uh, just so you can see, you know, whether the, the backup's going to pass or fail. That's always the first thing I'll do. Now, one more thing on this, on this file list only real quick. You've got a size and you've got a max size. And this is actually pretty important. This is clearly in bytes. This is actually pretty important because one thing SQL won't do is if you've got a 20 gig file and it's only got 10 megs of data in it, it won't shrink the file when it restores. So you have to have 20, 20 gigs of, of data space, of, of free space on the hard drive when you go to restore the, the backup. So if you've, got, if you've got 20 gigs and only 10 megs of it is, is full, which means you know more than most of it is empty, um, you still need that 20 gigs on the drive. So it's pretty important to, to come in here into file list and to see what's going on so you so you don't waste you know 30, 45 minutes on a restore only to have it fail because it runs out of space. So anyway, that's a little bit on, uh, on restoring and file list only and uh, uh, a couple of the with commands.